glad all of you are with us here tonight. Welcome those who join us in live stream also. This will be our 21st message in the series on the New Covenant. <clears throat> it's an important message dealing with an important, important truth. The phrases that I'll be expounding are found in the two texts that were read that God said to the Messiah, I will give you for a covenant mm -hmm. to the people. Now, I'd like to draw to your attention, first of all, the basis of God's dealing with men is always a covenant. A, a stipulation, as it were, that God lays down, guidelines. And this is, he has done this all through, uh, all through history. For instance, when he dealt with Noah, at the time of Noah, this is about 1,600 years after the creation. You'll remember the world had got it in such a bad shape, God just had to clean it off. Here's what he said to Noah. It's found in Genesis 6:18. But with thee, as compared to all the people who are going to be destroyed, with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come unto the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. So they got in on the covenant. That's right. If it wasn't for Noah, they wouldn't have been That's saved. Right. If it wasn't for Noah himself, Noah's family wouldn't have been saved. That's right. Genesis 9, 9, he said again, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. That covenant had to do with I'm not going to destroy the world by water again. That's it. So whatever you think about floods, you know, <laughs> and they come. Yeah. The world is not going to be destroyed by water, yeah. never again. Uh -huh. Next time it will be destroyed with fire. Yeah. Yeah. So in dealing with God, with men, God always operates within the boundaries of a covenant or the framework, shall I say, of a, of a covenant which states what he's going to do. God is not committed to doing anything he didn't promise. Yeah, that's right. With Noah and Abraham, the covenants were being involved, this being involved Noah and Abraham in what God was doing. So when God makes a covenant with someone, they're not off to the side somewhere. They're involved in the working out of the covenant. In his covenant with Israel, which was called the first covenant, the words of the covenant were the Ten Commandments. That's what they are called, the words of the covenant. The agreement was, the covenant was, do everything I said, then I'll bless you. Of course, the proof that they weren't able to do everything he said. That's why we have a new covenant. But he operated the framework of that covenant. If he punished the people, which he did numerous times, it's because they got outside that covenant. If he blessed the people, it's because they were in the, inside the covenant, doing what he said, yeah. see? So he operates within the framework of a covenant. That is, your associations with God are, are rational. There's a certain rationale in living for God. It just isn't you do your best and that's, it's just not like that. A lot of people think it is. I mean, I'm, God's going to save me because I'm doing the best I can. I'm not all that bad. But that's not, that's not the agreement. Yeah. Now, the new covenant, which is what we're talking about, is a different kind of covenant. It's not an arrangement like God had with Noah. So it's not... It's not that way. It's, just, it's a bit different. Some similarities. The similarity is that God said he was going to do something, and he did what he said. Yeah. Uh -huh. The scriptures say it's not according to the covenant that he made with Israel. This is spelled out in, in specifically. Not according to the covenant that I made with Israel. When I took the day, I took them out of, out of Egypt. That is, the covenant made at Sinai, which was the Ten Commandments, which he, the people said, We'll do them. Everything you said, yeah. we'll do it. 
they meant well, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they told Moses they'd do that. Moses went back to God and said, well, you know, this is what they said. Mm -hmm. And all that the Lord has said, we will do. It had to be done all the time. Yeah. You are not permitted one mistake. This is, we're talking about God, something yeah, God uh, did. Yeah. You weren't permitted one error or one mistake. And if you think that's too hard, that's, that's, all, Adam, that's all Adam and Eve had. First mistake they made, that's one kind of covenant. That's not the kind of covenant God's made in Christ. That's not the kind of covenant he made. Not according to that kind of covenant. Paul said in the uh, Second Timothy, he said it's a, not a covenant according to our works. It's a different kind of covenant. <clears throat> now let me just briefly rehearse the covenant he made with Abraham and the covenant he made with Israel, two different of covenants. Genesis 15, 18, God speaks to Abraham. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. That's a, that's a, different, kind of, <laughs> that's a different kind of covenant, see? Here's the covenant. Here's what I'm, the covenant is what he was going to do. Paul teaches us that this covenant was actually the, the new covenant in, in embryo. Mm -hmm. yeah. The covenant was, God said, I will do this. And there was going to be some kind of guarantee that underwrites that that's going to be done. And it's not going to be what you do. Again, Genesis 17, 2, it's the covenant I made with Abraham. I will make my covenant between me and thee and, and will multiply thee exceedingly. That wasn't, if you do this, I'll multiply, or you have a lot of offspring, in other words. It wasn't based on what yeah. Abraham did. The covenant was what God was going to do. Abraham's role in it was he had to believe that. He had to believe what God was going to do. Right. Genesis 17, 4, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be the father of many nations. Notice how it's... It's an announcement of what God's going to do. Genesis 17, 7, I will establish my covenant between me and thee and, and thy seed after thee, after their generations, and with, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. I mean, God see what he's going to do, see? Genesis 17, 9 and 10, God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee and their generation. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and thee, you and your seed after thee, every man child shall, among you shall be circumcised. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the outward sign yeah. that I've made this agreement yeah. with you. All right, now that's God's covenant to Abraham. It was different. It was different than the, than the covenant he made with Israel. It was different. Yeah. It was similar to the covenant he made with Noah. That was similar to that covenant. The covenant God made with Noah was, I won't let you go drown in the flood. That was his, <laughs> his, his agreement. With, with the way. He said, what you got to do is just build an ark. Build an ark, and my, my, I made my covenant with you that I'm going to destroy the world, but I, I, won't, I won't destroy you. You won't go down with it. See, this covenant with Abraham is similar to that kind of covenant. It's, a, it's an agreement they, of what God's going to do. Yeah, that's right, yeah. God's telling what he's going to do mm -hmm. instead of telling the people what they should do. That's See, right. that's like all the difference uh -huh. in the world. Amen. Now, let's, I'm going to compare that with the covenant made with Israel. Mm -hmm. now, I'm doing this because the new covenant is compared not with Abraham's covenant. It's not compared with Noah's covenant. It's compared with Israel's mm -hmm. covenant. Yeah, here's the, here's the covenant he made with Israel, the agreement, the guidelines. Mm -hmm. Exodus 19.5, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice, mm -hmm. indeed, mm -hmm. that means without exception, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So I'll, I'll treat you absolutely uniquely if you do <clears throat> everything I say. Yeah. That's a different, that's not the kind of covenant he made with Noah. Is not the kind of covenant he made with Abraham. Again, Exodus 24, 7. He took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. 
It was the Ten Commandments and all the laws that were, were suspended upon those Ten Commandments. And said all of the, and he, he took the book of the covenant, read it to the audience of the people. That'd be the book of Exodus and Leviticus. And the people said, all that the Father has done, we will do. All that the Lord has said, we will do. Yeah. That was the covenant. Yeah. Now let me tell you that when you tell God, you're going to do something. He's going to hold you to it. Amen. Uh -huh. And not allow you to back out, change your mind. Moses took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you concerning all these things. That sealed it. All right, this is it. God told you what you were to do. He even told you when you were to do it. Yeah. He told you when to work. <clears throat> He told you when not to work. Yes. Mm -hmm. He told you what to eat. He told you what not to eat. Right. He told you when to have feasts, mm -hmm. when to have holy days, and when not to. Yeah. He gave you a Sabbath day. He told you what to do on it and what not to do on it. See? Yeah. Yeah. Spelled it all out yeah. Yeah. in detail. If at any point they didn't do what God said, if they didn't, just one, you're only allowed one yeah. error. If at any time they didn't keep the Sabbath day, or at any time they murdered somebody, or at any time they stole something, or at any time they didn't remember what God told them, or any time they conducted themselves differently than they agreed to conduct themselves, yeah, uh -huh. that severed the covenant. That's right. yeah. The promise of blessing terminated yes. at that point. This is the way God is now. When God makes a covenant, this is the way it is. If it's got stipulations to it, those stipulations have to be met. Yeah. You can't have association with God Almighty and not be involved in what He said. It can't happen. Now the new covenant we're going to find is, uh, is different because the, the agreement's going to be made with somebody else. Yeah. It's not going to be made with us. That's the point of what I'm preaching tonight yeah. now. Yeah. I am preaching that the, cov the new covenant was made with Jesus, not with you. Amen. Only by virtue of your involvement with Jesus is it, does it apply to you. Not only to the degree that you're in Christ Jesus. Now when the apostle says, not according to the covenant, the new covenant is not according to the covenant I made with Israel, he means by that it is not based upon your response. Uh -huh. You've got to have a response. Now understand it. I'm not saying that God saves people even though they're a bunch of disobedient people. Uh -huh. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the basis of the covenant is different. In Israel, the basis or the foundation was, did you do it? Uh -huh. Did you do it? Flawlessly, did you do it? If they didn't, just like Adam and Eve, did you eat of the tree? Did you do what I told you not to do? You only did it one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did it. Out. See? These are the kind of agreements now God made before Jesus. Yes. With Israel, they broke, the, they broke all ten of the commandments at the foot of Mount Sinai. Before they ever moved away from Mount Sinai, they'd broken all the commandments. They'd broken all the commandments. They committed immorality. They forgot God. They got drunk. They worshipped idols. See, they broke all of them right there. So when he says, not according to the covenant I made with Israel, the covenant I'm making is not according to the covenant I made with Israel, he's saying that this new covenant not, doesn't have a foundation like that other covenant had. Or as Paul said in 2 Timothy 1.9, he saved us and called us according to a holy calling, not according to our works. Amen. See, that? that's yes. what he's talking about there. Uh -huh. It's not because we measured up, and that's why he let us in. Now let me get down to this more specifically, that the new covenant is a different kind of covenant it's based on what God does. Yeah. 
not what man does. And to do that, it's got to be founded on some person other than us. Because there's none righteous, all of sin, so you can't find a suitable representative in the human race that God can base this covenant on. So my, my sermon is, he's good, he gave Jesus as the covenant. That's right. Now let's break that down some. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians 2.13, here's an illustration of this. We are bound to give thanks all the way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. You'd think he'd say, well, we thank God for you because you've measured up. Which many of these people did measure up as fully as you could. No, he says, the choice that made the difference wasn't yours. Yes, right. He's a different, this different kind of covenant now. Yes, uh -huh. The choice was God's choice. It's God's choice yes. that made the difference. Uh -huh. God hath from the beginning chosen you unto self in order to salvation. See, it's a different kind of a different kind of a covenant. Yes, God, under the first covenant made with Israel, men did the washing. Mm -hmm. yes. All the washing, there were different kind of washing. Sacrifices were washed, clothes were washed, people were washed, but all the washing was done by people. Uh -huh. yes. All of it, lock, stock, and barrel. But now under the new covenant. It's God that does the washing. Yes, amen. You are washed, uh -huh. cleansed. Uh -huh. Who did that? God did it. Amen. Because it was based on you, it wouldn't have been done. Yeah, that's right. God does the conforming or the shaping. Yes. Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So the objective of Godhead was not just for you to fulfill a code. It was for you to be like Christ. Now see, any honest person knows, say, hey, we can't do that. If you were able to live a thousand years, you still couldn't get that done. Yeah. Uh -huh. God is the one who did it. So I'm showing you now with the difference when Christ is a covenant that that frees God to be able to move ahead with His, Amen. with His purpose. Second Corinthians three eighteen accents this also, but we all, we all we believers, you say, with open face, that is, we're able to look head on into Christ. And beholding is in the glass the glory of the Lord, and we're looking, we're looking at not a law. <laughs> we're not looking at a commandment. We're looking at a person, Amen. Jesus Christ. And as we look at him, yes. we are transformed into that image. Right. The, the reflection of him changed right. us. Yes. <laughs> Now, when God looked at Israel, it changed His it changed His countenance toward them. Mm -hmm. To the blessed, it be cursed them, sit judgment on them. See, when God looks at sin, it changes how He sees that person. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Well, you you read this you read this all through all of Moses and the prophets that when God saw sin in somebody, He just didn't ignore it. But here the change takes place in us, mm -hmm. not in God. Now, God never changed his promise, his character never changed, but his attitude, uh -huh. his attitude toward people changed. Mm -hmm. He loved Solomon when he installed him. It got to the point mm -hmm. he was irritated by Solomon. He chose Israel, they were precious in his sight. Israel had got to the point when God looked at him, it irritated him. And he judged them. Why? Because that covenant was based on their response. Now in Christ, now see, God does the shaping and choosing. God does the sanctifying work. In the under the law, the people did the sanctifying work. 
They sanctified the priests. They sanctified the tabernacle. They sanctified the sacrifices. See, they, they did the sanctifying. Mm -hmm. But now in Christ, it said of Jesus that he might sanctify and cleanse it, that's the church, uh -huh. with the washing of water by the word. Now men can argue about well, what's washing by the water. Is that what? You're missing the whole point. The point isn't how it's done, it's who does it. It's who does it. God taught people under the law, you got to be clean. Now, if you come before God, you've got to be clean. You can't come before God defiled. That's why, that's why you've got to confess your sin. You want God to be on your side, so to speak. You've got to confess your sin. He will not take you dirty. He won't do it. But in our case, now in Christ, see, he does the washing. Yeah. Amen. Hebrews 13, 12, he does the sanctifying of the people. He sets the people apart. Under the law, the high priest, the priest, so forth, were set apart by men. God designated the stipulate what would make a person qualify, but the people did it. But now Hebrews 13, 12 says, Jesus also that he might sanctify the people, that he might, that he might, See, now here's where I'm going with this message, brethren. If you can get in Christ and abide in Christ, all the benefits of the covenant pass to you by virtue of your union with Christ. See, that's, that's where I'm going with this. So God, uh, God, then he remakes the people. He's already proved through history that people can't do perfectly what he requires of them. And about the time you think you can, you are just dead wrong. That's all there is to it. So he's going to remake the people. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, new creation. New kind of, a new kind of person. God recreates the person in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2.10, he spells it out even more. He says, we are his workmanship. See, a Christian, legitimate Christian, is someone God has made. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you be a person that's sloppy in their life, disobedient, inconsistent, unfaithful, this is not the product of God's work. Uh -huh. God doesn't make people like that. That's right. We do happen to know who does. Yes, uh -huh. We are his workmanship created. Mm -hmm. that, means that, that means you're a different kind of person. Mm -hmm. Beneath this body where you can't see is a different kind of person. Yes, that's right. Well, it's a different kind of person living in this body. Amen. That person is strong enough to make this body do what he's supposed to do. That's right. That person inside can take the body by the nap of the neck and say, here's what we're going to do. Before, the body took the inside person and made it. See? Now they were, remember, the, God gives Jesus for a covenant. So everything God does now is going to be based upon our connection with Christ. Galatians 4, 7 you are no more a servant, but a son, son of God. You're no more a servant. You're not like Ishmael in the house, a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ, through, through, through Christ. See, Christ, I gave, he gave him for a covenant. If you got Christ, you got everything that goes with the covenant. Yes. This is something you got to know. This is not something you guess at. Yes, well, at least I did this. You've got to know this. We've got to know whom we have believed, right. and be persuaded that He's able to keep us from falling. So you've got to, you've got to know Christ, because the covenant is based on Christ. If you got Christ, you got the covenant. That's right. Amen. If you don't have Christ, you don't have the covenant. Uh -huh. Period. Mm -hmm. See, so that's why you have to know mm -hmm. these things. So we're heirs of God through Christ, 
I'll give him for a covenant. God's kindness toward us, which is through which is through Christ, Ephesians two seven, that in ages to come he might show us show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. See, I'll give him uh-huh. for a covenant. <laughs> if you got Christ, you got the covenant. Amen. You got the blessing. Let's look at this thing further. In Philippians 4, 7, The peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. See, I'll give him That's right. yeah. for a covenant uh-huh. through Christ. Oh, what about the love of God? What about the love of God? Neither height nor depth nor any of the creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. See, I'll give him. I'll give him yes. for a covenant. Can you, you can see that, can't you? Yes, amen. If you got Christ, you got whatever God promised He'd do. Yes. He'll do to you mm-hmm. if you are in Christ amen. and possess Christ. If you're not, you'll get nothing. That's, right. That's the way it works. All of this is, uh, as I have said, is done through Christ. I'll give him for a covenant to the people. Let me remind you of those texts again. Isaiah 42, 6. I, the Lord, have called thee, that's the people, in righteousness. That's, I mean, that's the Messiah. I have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand. I'll be with you in working out the salvation. You say this to the Son. I will keep thee, and I will give thee for a covenant of the people for a light. Mm -hmm. See, if the people have you, they'll see things as they really are. If they don't have you, they'll be blind as bats. Mm -hmm. They'll not be able to see. Jesus is the covenant, personified. Again, Isaiah 49, 8. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee. I will preserve thee. I will give thee for a covenant. He's talking to the Son. I will give thee for a covenant of the people. I'm going to hang everything on you, Son. I'm well pleased. See, he's well pleased with what Jesus did. He's not well pleased with what humanity has done. Am I right? Mm -hmm. He's not well pleased with what humanity has done. He's well pleased with what Jesus has done. And I'm going to make you the covenant. <clears throat> so now reasoning upon this, Jesus is the covenant. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the guarantee of what God promised in the covenant. Amen. So we read about him in Ephesians 4, 2, 2, 14. He is our peace. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> the peace isn't like a state, it's a person. <laughs> see, see how different it is? It's a person, not a state. If you have peace, it's because you have Christ. He is our peace. And he is, Colossians 3, 4, he is our life. It says he's our life. I give him for a covenant to the people. So if you've got Christ, you got life. If you don't even have Christ, you don't have life. If you have Christ, you can respond favorably to God. If you don't have Christ, you can't. Yeah. And again, he's our Passover. Mm-hmm. See, 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Christ, our Passover. See, he gave Christ for a covenant. Mm-hmm. We had to have a Passover. That We had to have a reason for God to protect us. Yeah. Amen. Passover doesn't mean pass by. Mm-hmm. Passover means like to cover, yeah. uh-huh. cover over, protect from the wrath of God. Mm-hmm. We had to have a reason for God to protect us. That's right. yes. All right, what we did wasn't reason enough. Yeah. Because it was, we were flawed. There were some people who conducted their lives pr- pretty good, you know, pretty good. A few, few errors here and there, but they, it wasn't enough to protect them. So Christ is our Passover. He like, yeah. uh-huh. he like hovers over like a hen does over a chick. Okay. See, uh-huh. yeah. he hovers over you and protects you. But Christ is our Passover. Mm-hmm. I give him for a covenant to the people, and it says that he is our wisdom, righteousness, mm-hmm. sanctification, and redemption. He's our wisdom. That's why we, how we are able to reason out what to do, how to live, yeah. how to pray. Mm-hmm. He is our righteousness. This makes us acceptable. Yes. 
He's our sanctification. It, make, it, it sets us apart yeah. for God's use. Yeah. And he's our redemption. That is our, the proof that we've been bought and purchased. It's Jesus is that. See, he, I will give him for a covenant to the people. See, if you have Jesus, you've got all of that. Amen. If you don't have Jesus, you have none of that. Here's Ephesians 2.14. He is our peace. See, who hath made both one. Colossians 3.4. Who, Christ, who is our life. <laughs> or 1 Corinthians 5.7. Even Christ, our Passover. Who sacrificed for us. So 1 Corinthians 1.30. Of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. See, that's all those things that I just mentioned. God gave Christ as a covenant to the people. If you have Christ, the promises of God are guaranteed. Amen. Well, that's the case. This is actually stated. That's just not a theory. Amen. 2 Corinthians 1.20. All the promises of God in him, that's in Christ, are yea or yes. And amen, that's our response. Under the glory of God by us. See, all the promises of God, there's a lot of them. I trust you're familiar with God's promises. You do need to know, you do need to know what God re requires of you. You need to know that. People say the Bible's a road map, you know, show us the way to God, but all right, so there's there's an element of truth to that. But how about the promises? That's not a road map. Yeah, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Promises aren't a road map. Yeah. All the promises of God. Listen, the more aware you are of Christ uh -huh. and of your acceptance in him, the more convinced you are that the promises of God are true. Mm -hmm. If you're not aware of Christ, the promises are like questionable to you. Yeah. You're not sure, not sure about it. You might pray, oh God, if there is a God. You know, that's someone who doesn't know the promises. We're made the righteousness of God in him. I'll give him for a covenant to the people. The unrighteous, they are not going to inherit the kingdom. Whatever you may think about unrighteous people and what God thinks about them, not one of them is going to be with the Lord. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom Amen. of God. So there has to be some way mm -hmm. for people to be righteous. Mm -hmm. By God's definition, so they live right. Yeah. All right, 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he, God, hath made him, Christ, to be sin for us, who know no sin, that we might be made, that we might be made, yeah the righteousness of God in him. So God gave the Christ as a covenant to the people, yes. see? Uh -huh. So when you have Christ, you're made yes. yeah. you're made the kind of person God accepts. Yeah. That's right. Jesus is the one that made you that way. He's the mm -hmm. he's the covenant. And as a matter of fact, his name, his name was prophesied in uh, Jeremiah 23:6. Here's the name wherewith he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. See, I'll give him for a covenant <laughs> to the people. And again, Jeremiah 33, 16, In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. See? I will give him for a covenant to the people. Oh, yeah, oh, this is something that... If you're, if you're too academic in your approach to this, it'll lose its power. If you just do word studies and dictionary definitions and things like that, you will not be convinced of it. This has to be, a, this is affirmed in the gospel. God, first of all, he told the prophets, I'm going to give him for a covenant to the people. He was, he was talking to the, to the Christ in his pre-incarnate form when he was a the word and was with God. He was speaking to him then. And then from his, I'm going to give you as a covenant. And I got to have a guarantee before I can bless these people. I just can't bless these people because I'm nice. That's right. God is kind, but he's not that kind. Hmm? God's gentle, but he's not that gentle. 
God's considered it, but he's not that considered not when he's looking at a sinner. Mm -hmm. There has to be <laughs> there has to be some other basis. God's love, but that's not enough to save you. His love counts zero if you're not in Christ. You don't be talking about the love of God. In fact, if Christ isn't in you, you're not, his love's not towards you. He already told you, you're my beloved son. He said to Jesus, you're my beloved son. You're my beloved son yeah. in whom I am well pleased. Have you got God's son, Jesus? God loves you. Yeah. Amen. Not, not just a theoretic love. He loves everybody. Uh -huh. It's not that kind of love. It's a personal love personal beneficence where God cares for you and leads you and teaches you and so forth. If you got Christ, Dad, you got all that. I'll give him as a covenant to the people. The pleasure of the Lord, yeah. pleasure of the Lord is what he wants to do. Yeah. Now God not only really wants to do something, it's his nature to want that something to prosper. He doesn't want to set out on a project of ten things and one of them comes to pass. I mean, this isn't the way God is. He wants his pleasure to prosper. What he wants flourishes, grows, advances. So Isaiah 53:10, speaking of the Messiah, says, The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. That's another way of saying I give him as a covenant to the people. Uh -huh, See? Yes. What God wants in you will happen mm -hmm. if you have Christ. Amen. It'll happen. The pleasure of the Lord will prosper. What God wants you to be, you'll be if you have Christ. Yeah. Oh, I know it takes effort of this sort of thing. I understand that, but the cause isn't your effort. Yeah. The cause is Christ. I give Amen. I'll yeah. give him right. for a covenant. I'm not uh -huh. going to condition the covenant on if you do. Uh -huh. yes. That's not how I'm going to circumscribe the covenant. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The covenant's not going to have boundaries. If you do this, I'll do that. It's not going to have those kind of boundaries. It's going to be lock, stock, and barrel in Christ. I'm going to give him as a covenant. And a covenant is as sure to you as your connection to Jesus is sure. Amen. It's just that, just that sure. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. There you see, I give him I give him for a covenant. Mm -hmm. Redemption in Christ Jesus, that means your debt to God mm -hmm. has been paid. Yeah. Now, sin does create indebtedness to God. Yeah. Yeah. That debt can't be paid by you saying I'm sorry. You do have to say that. You do have to repent yes. and confess it. Amen. But that's not the thing that that's not the thing that saves you. Mm -hmm. the thing that saves you is the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. Right. That sin will then be the payment will be extracted from Christ's sacrifice. Mm -hmm. See, Christ actually paid the whole debt at once. You're part of the debt is paid when you have Christ. Yeah, you see yeah, that? Yeah. The state of no condemnation. Whoa, that's a good state, huh? Mm -hmm. No condemnation, that's not based upon what you do or how perfectly you've complied with what God said. Although we in Christ, we do want to perfectly comply. We do, yeah. we do want to do this, but we have to admit we have not done very well mm -hmm. in this area. Even if you're in Christ, you've got to have continual forgiveness. That's right. You have to have continual grace and continual help. Yeah. See, but but the, if, it, if Christ is the covenant, then you got all that when you have Christ. Amen. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. See, there he is. I'll give him for a covenant. So you read the covenant. The new covenant reads like this. Says, I'll, I'll write my laws in their heart and put them in their minds. I'll be to them a God, they'll be to me a people, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll not remember their sins anymore. Mm -hmm. How do you get that? Mm -hmm. That comes with the covenant. Yeah, that's right. see, see, the old covenant didn't bring with it cleansing. The old covenant, you didn't, you, you, you had, you weren't made clean. 
That's why they had to have these continual sacrifices. That's why they had to sacrifice, 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 bloody sacrifices. That's why, because the sin never was removed, either from the mind of God or from the conscience of the people. But when you come into Christ, when you have Christ, now the covenant, the covenant is fulfilled. Now you, you actually, you begin to think your thought processes are in harmony with God's law. So you actually think this way, well, I do love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yes. Mm. I'm determined. I'm not, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to worship idols. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm not going to bow down to anybody else. He did, why do you determine that? This is more than just, I know this is what God expects, so I'm determining it. Uh -huh. determining it. It's Christ in you, see? That's right. Christ is the covenant. The covenant is Christ. And it's being, it's being fulfilled on you through him. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God, Romans 5, 1. Why? Do you have peace with God because you have done everything he said? Or even because you want to do everything God said? You have peace with God because of Christ. Mm -hmm. He's been given as a covenant to the people. And you're blessed. He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed with all spiritual blessings, being every spiritual blessing, you've got access to it. You've got access to the warehouse of divine blessing. Amen. You can have as much of it as you want. Mm -hmm. Not because you're so deserving, but because you have Christ. Yes. God gave Christ as a covenant to the people. Yes. So now if you have him, you've got this, yeah. you've got this access. And he's raised us up, Ephesians 2, 6. He's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Mm -hmm. Why are you sitting with Christ? Is it because you've done enough? Mm -hmm. Is it because you are a sterling example of not making a mistake or an error? No, it's because you're in Christ. He yeah. has given him to be the covenant. Right. So when he, see, when he looks at you and he sees Christ, uh -huh. the covenant is, applies to you. That's see. right. We are blessed in Christ. Blessed, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Uh -huh. And we're we're created in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ephesians two ten. We are His God's workmanship. That's right. Now look at some Christians. I know this isn't what God made. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. <laughs> I can look at myself in the past. And say, hey, this isn't what God made. That's right. That's why I had to be born again just like you had to be born again because that's not what God made. But when you come into Christ, he recreates you. Amen. And you're created unto good works. This means you're, he, he equips you. He creates you so you have an inclination to do good works and you actually do them. Yes. Why? Because he gave Jesus as a covenant to the people. So once again, the covenant is Jesus and the covenant was actually made with Jesus. Now we have a record of it in Hebrews 10, 5 through 10, and this is prophesied in the 40th Psalm. Wherefore, when, when he, that's Christ, cometh into the world, I'm going to point out that the agreement was made with Christ. Uh -huh. He says, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldst not, this is the Messiah talking, but a body is thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, which is what God commanded, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, and I didn't work out with the people, Father. Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. In the volume of the book is written of me. Above when you said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offering for sin, thou wouldst not, that is, you weren't. Think of the hundreds of thousands and millions of sacrifices that were offered. Yeah, uh -huh. Bloody sacrifices, just staggering how many they were. Didn't please God. Yeah, uh -huh. Left the people just like they were before. Yes. Then said I, I could see, I could see this is what you wanted. This, this first covenant wasn't doing what you wanted done. What it was doing was show the people that they're going to have to have a lot of help <laughs> to be pleasing to you. So I come, I said, I come to do thy will, O God. He takes away the first, that's the first covenant, which is based upon what people did. That he may establish the second. See, the agreement was between God and Christ. Jesus made this agreement with the Father. 
I'll come. I'll do your will because I know you haven't been pleased with what men did. You have not been pleased with what men did. Uh -huh. And, and it, we're just talking about what men did that you told them to do. We're just talking about that aspect, not to, not to mention the freelancers. They just didn't do what you told them to do. And you know, I know you're not pleased with that. It doesn't make any difference. How many bloody sacrifices are offered? You're not going to be pleased with this. I know that the son, the, the, before he became a man, he said this to the word. I know. So I'm coming. I'm coming, Father. As a stand-in for humanity. I'm going to stand in for humanity. Amen. And the Father says that, yeah. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll do it. I'll hold your hand. I'll uphold you. Yeah. I'll give you for the covenant to the people. Yeah. Then that passage in uh, Hebrews 10, 5 through 10. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Uh -huh. He adds, He, that's the Son of God, he taketh away the first, that's the first covenant, uh -huh. based on works, right. that he may establish the second, that he may establish, that he may establish the second, mm -hmm. by the which will, mm -hmm. the will is the covenant, yeah. will like a last will and testament right, will, yeah. we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, that's another way of saying, I will give thee for a covenant yes, to the yeah. people, see? <laughs> so the first covenant, men had to keep it themselves, that was the agreement. Mm -hmm. But now we have a we have a salvation that has a captain. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Instead of us achieving the salvation, we're working it out, working out our own salvation, which means we're 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 able to see it more clearly. What God has done, we're able to see it more clearly. It became him for whom are all things, by whom are all things. That's that's the Christ in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain, to make, not to make the people perfect, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Why? Because I'm going to give him for a covenant. Mm -hmm. Now, he's got to be the kind of person that will empathize with the people he's saving. It's got, it's got to be someone who's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Yeah. That knows what it's like to be tempted. It can help the people at the tempt level. That's right. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do, son. I'm going to give you as a covenant to the people. Now here's God's commitment. It's recorded in Isaiah 53, 10 through 12. I'm giving. He's giving Christ as a covenant to the people. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53, 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Somebody's got to be bruised. Uh -huh. Some guys, somebody's got to pay the price. Mm -hmm. He has put him to grief. Someone's got to, someone's got to be sorry that this condition existed. Uh -huh. yes. This has got to hurt somebody uh -huh. with grief. So he, he gave him Jesus as a covenant. Yeah. He's the one that's going to bear the, the grief that was required. Yeah. Thou shalt make, when thou shalt make thy soul an offering for sin. That's when Jesus made his soul. He offered his soul, which was perfect. That's right. He offered it. That's his life. He offered it up to God. Mm -hmm. God will see his seed. He'll see the people who trust in him. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, that's another way of saying he gave him for a covenant. Yes. See, yeah. he shall see that's right. the, his sons that's and his right. brethren yeah. because I'm giving you for a covenant. Yeah. So in you and him, why? See, see, God sees this. He shall see God, shall see the travail of his soul, Christ's soul, and shall be satisfied. That's it. I'm going to give you for a covenant to the people. He shall bear their, my righteous servant shall justify many by his knowledge, by people knowing the Savior, he would justify many. Mm -hmm. See, now, under the old covenant, it was this do and live. Right. Right, that was the agreement. Right. Now what Jesus has given as the covenant now is, are you satisfied with Jesus? God says, I'm satisfied. Yes. I, I'm satisfied with him. See, I saw the travail of his soul and I'm satisfied. Now the only issue is whether you're satisfied or not. Yes. Amen. See, how will I know that I'm satisfied? If you live for him. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. If you lay down your life for him, then 
You've got, you've got, yes. Jesus is the covenant to you. Amen. You've got it. Here's what God said I'm going to do. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great. It is people will only associate you, son, with greatness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he, as a savior, will divide the spoil with the strong. The spoil is the spoils of victory, see? When they had a war with someone, they'd sack the city. They'd take all the precious things. And that was called spoil. I'm going to give him for a covenant to the people, and he'll take the spoil mm -hmm. and dis he'll distribute it yeah. to the people. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the agreement. God said, yeah. I'll do. Because he poured out his soul unto death. Uh -huh. He did that. He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So this is what I'm going to do. Whoever's got Jesus has got the spoil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would be more accurate to his division of the spoil. Right. He, he has it. See, so everything now hinges mm -hmm. upon whether or not you're in Christ. Amen. That's right. If any man be in Christ, uh -huh. he, anybody, That's right. then he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yes. That's another way of saying, I will give him as a covenant to the people. Amen. That's right. See? So one of the reasons when we meet, uh, meet together, one of the things we, we do want to get done as well as we can is, is to make Christ real so that he's yeah. left him out of the domain of theory and philosophy so we're that he's, he's real has substance to him and teach people how to clarify that they are in Christ yeah. because if they can ever know this if you can ever know that you're in Christ you've got the covenant 